Good evening. This is Letitia with Soul's Bread Wisdom, and I am here with another sinistry reading of Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown. I recently recorded um, a sinistry reading for Beyonce and Jay Z, which you can see in their sinistry chart that um they really help each other they um feel safe with each other they feel at home um and they make each other do better they um increase each other in beautiful ways and so i wanted to choose a couple uh that had a lot of challenges to um just show the differences, you know, um, as far as what the planets can do and, and, you know, you meet someone and you have some, uh, powerful things that bring you together. But if you link up with someone and their, um, placements of Pluto, uh, things are moving into your eighth house, it can change the whole dynamic of uh your life it can affect your life and affect uh what you are able to do with your life because they bring those challenges the challenges of their chart into your chart and vice versa and it can um derail your purpose um those energies can cause you harm and sometimes even shorten your life okay So we're going to just take a look and see how Whitney Houston affected Bobby Brown and how Bobby Brown affected uh, Whitney Houston based on their um, astrological charts. So I have um, Bobby Brown born February 5th, 1969 in Boston, Massachusetts at 521 a.m. And Whitney Houston born August 9th, 1963. In Newark, New Jersey at 8.55 p.m. God rest her soul. I captured these charts off of astro.com and brought them together. Normally in synastry, you would overlay the charts and and see how the planets um, are falling into the other's houses. But I have them here side by side and we're just going to walk through I'm going to start with the moon, as I always do, because the moon is so important in showing how you feel comfortable with the person, how you feel at home, how you feel safe. Are you able to just relax and be with this person? Okay. So we have Whitney Houston's moon in the sign of Aries at 17 degrees, and it is making a, a conjunction to Jupiter which is good because the Jupiter Jupiter loves to be with the moon. And in the, in the, I have a Placidus chart. These are Placidus charts because they come up that way on astro.com unless you change it. And I didn't go through and change it, but in a whole house system, she, you, she, you see, she has a Pisces rising. So her second house would be Aries. So the moon and the, and uh, Jupiter would be in, the second house she is a pisces rising and a virgo descendant bobby has capricorn rising and a cancer descendant so we have here the moon and jupiter in the second house the second house of course rules the throat the traditional ruler of this house is um taurus which rules the boys which rules self esteem you know the vocal cords And so, for sure, she has this big, beautiful, soothing voice uh, coming through because that moon and and Jupiter are there in the second house. And then she has the ruler uh, of of the uh, second house going into the third. So Taurus is going to be the third house in the whole house system. And the ruler is in the fifth, in the sign of Leo. Venus rules Taurus. 
So here's the third house is the house of communication. So she's got the ruler in Leo in the fifth and uh, the fifth house has to do with um, being creative, having, you know, this beautiful artistic nature. So she definitely had that in Leo, the sun and Venus together there in the sign of Leo made her this great performer. So what is happening over here with Bobby and Aries? So we see that he has Saturn in the sign of Aries. So this Saturn comes over here and connects with her moon. So his Saturn in Aries is coming over where her moon is. His is at 20 degrees. Saturn is at 20 degrees. And it is making a conjunction to her moon. So this is where you can see um, uh, where she could have felt that she was judged harshly by him, where she may have felt that he was cold towards her because Saturn can be very cold. We saw something similar in uh, with Jay-Z and Beyonce that her Saturn... Uh, was in a close conjunction to his moon uh, in her 12th house. and But in this situation, we're looking at uh, the fourth house here. So her moon and Jupiter comes into his fourth house, which would indeed, this is a sign of somebody that you want to marry with the moon, coming into your fourth house moon and Jupiter because they make you feel at home so this is what she brought to him her moon and Jupiter coming into his fourth house would cause him to feel nurtured and safe and at home with this person so this is this is a significator of somebody that um is in line to be married when your moon and Jupiter or moon come into your partner's fourth house. But his Saturn connecting with her moon and her Jupiter, uh, he would probably oftentimes make her feel smaller, make her, um, even he could have, you know, just tried to make her be quiet or try to control her. Or, you know, there were times where she did not feel safe where she could feel that she wasn't able to feel like she could flow like she needed to or possibly even use her voice like she needed to because of this Saturn coming in here. Okay, so that is one um, indicator. Another huge thing that I notice here is that uh, Whitney has Mars in the eighth house. Here it says the seventh because we're looking at the Placidus system. But Libra would be in the eighth house because here is the seventh. And this would be the cusp in the whole house system. So we have Virgo here. And then Libra is going to uh, be leading in with the eighth house. So she has Mars in the eighth house. And that Mars, of course, is um, a Mars in the eighth house is, is a, a challenge in placement showing that there are issues with power and control from other people uh, trying to control her. Men in particular. Mars represents men that you date, have relationships with. So she uh, would have issues with the men in her life trying to control her and dominate her. And vice versa, because oftentimes the people that we bring into our lives, they are mirrors to who we are. So the eighth house has to do with deep psychological issues. It has to do with drugs, um, hard drugs, uh, cocaine, heroin, and so forth. Um, uh, and the use of it because you're trying to deal with the pain and the issues of uh, karmic things, perhaps that uh, you haven't been able to let go. And so we have Mars here uh, for her. And then we have Jupiter 
um, Barbie's Jupiter, which Jupiter expands whatever it touches. We have Jupiter. His Jupiter is going to come over here into her eighth house, and it's going to make a conjunction with this Mars. So whatever Jupiter touches, it expands it. So with Bobby's Jupiter coming here, it's going to expand the fights and the issues of power and control because Mars has to do with fighting. It has to do with arguing. It has to do with um, abuse oftentimes. In the eighth house, which is the uh, traditionally the house of Scorpio and Pluto and Mars, because Mars is traditional ruler of Scorpio, you have here in the sign of Libra, which has to do with diplomacy and 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 getting along and and trying to collaborate and work together with Mars here, um, and then Jupiter coming in conjunction with it. It brings, you know, just, again, a lot of pain related to power and control, the drugs, Uranus at three degrees. His Uranus is coming over here, bringing sudden changes, bringing issues of um, of um, changing even sexual partners. His Jupiter coming in here, you know, issues that have to do with sex and power, control. Um, uh, abuse, drugs, all of this is heightened, heightened with this particular partner that she is having this relationship with because all of these planets are, are coming into her eighth house and bringing up, bubbling up all of these issues, psychological issues, drugs, power control, so forth. Okay, so that is something that he is bringing into her life, you know, and it's more and more as the relationship grows uh deeper more and more okay and then we have uh neptune for her for both of them in the sign of scorpio so uh when we go to the sign of scorpio we're looking at scorpio and the whole house system in the ninth house so the ninth house has to do with travel it has to do with beliefs it has to do with religion it has to do with all, you know, things that are uh, taboo and occult. So his Mars coming over here into her ninth house is going to, and it also has, ninth house has to do with legal issues. So, you know, we know that uh, ultimately um, there was a lot of uh, legal issues that did happen that transpired between them when it was all said and done. And Neptune uh, can dissolve. Neptune does dissolve, uh, makes things, you know, uh, go away. So with the Mars coming uh, to Neptune, you know, it could cause the, you know, the passion for the relationship. Uh, the passion to travel together, to connect deeply in a scorpionic way. Neptune here can cause that to dissolve. Okay. And uh, the bond that they had uh, sexually to dissolve with Neptune coming in here. Uh, the sign of Scorpio rules sex. It rules that deep, deep bond. Uh, but Mars coming in here to with this Neptune could be a lot of deception in action Mars rules the actions that you take a lot of um uh, jealousy power and control again that's that issue repeats itself and then the other thing that we have um he has his uh north node is here in the sign of Aries so that north node is sitting here in the second house. But the south node, which is what you shed and what you get rid of, comes into her eighth house in the sign of Libra because the north node is always sitting opposite the uh, the south node. So 
the south node is his south node is in the sign of Libra at zero degrees. So it comes over here into her eighth house, making a conjunction with that Mars as well. So we're talking about a karmic connection, absolutely. Past life connection where they absolutely had unfinished business. So her Mars, where she takes action, comes together with his south node in her eighth house. And um, we saw that it was very uh, tumultuous, um, but they didn't want to let go of each other. You know, there was uh, something so emotional, you know, where they surely felt like they knew each other from a past life because they probably did with the South Node coming into Mars. But she was, you know, ultimately drained. And he was affected by it too, of course. Uh, but she was she was drained. And it, it, it triggered, surely that South Node triggered the issues that she had that led to a lot of the uh, the drug use and, and things, of course, exacerbated and got worse, okay? So again, the South Node is where you shed things. So his South Node um, came into her eighth house of all of this psychological issue and drama and pain, okay? So then we have his moon in the sign of Virgo, with Pluto, again, power and control. Pluto is about power and control. So he has a conjunction natally with the moon and Pluto. So this means that when he grew up, he probably had the issues of power and control with his mother, which I haven't read any of his story. I don't know his relationship with his mom or whatever female caregiver he had. But this would definitely be a sign of that, that there were issues of power and control um, with the moon-Pluto conjunction here. But this Pluto and moon come over here into her seventh house. So as it comes into her seventh house of partnerships and others, where she already has Pluto sitting here natally, his, her Pluto joins up with his moon. And then his... Uh, Moon comes over here to her Mercury. So they love to talk to each other. They had great communication uh, initially, but Pluto is involved in it. So we had the issues where she was trying to control him. Where are you going? What are you doing? You know, I need you to be where I said you needed to be. And then um, he was trying to control her because his Pluto comes over here. So he's trying to control what she's saying with Mercury sitting here. Uh, who are you talking to? What are you doing? Where are you going? So they constantly had this. So we have this eighth house going through drama. We have this uh, ninth house going through drama. And we have the seventh house going through drama. So power and control were huge themes in this relationship. Huge, huge, huge themes. Um, it was a big, a big thing all the time, and and of ultimately it led to the destruction of the marriage, and then it drained Whitney of her ashe, you know, of her energy, because we only have so much energy to give out and to work with in a lifetime, and if you spend your ashe on the relationships that are plutonic. Um, they can drain you of your life force, literally, you know. And I am inclined to say that that is what happened uh, with beautiful Whitney. So Whitney, um, Whitney has, this is the other big thing. She has Chiron, which is the wounded healer, sitting here in the sign of Pisces. A Chiron in the first house represents someone who is not sure that they should be here. Um, this is a wounded, a wounded ego, a wounded self. You know, am I was I even supposed to be born? I'm not sure. You know, uh, there was something uh, surrounding when she was born. Um, this energy that made her feel like 
um, she didn't necessarily deserve to be alive from within. Even if you have parents and a daddy who dotes on you and loves on you, when you have Chiron in the first house, there's something internally that question, should I be here? And then she had it in the sign of Pisces, making her really, really vulnerable to other people's energy, to whatever people were going through. She was open to feeling it. It also opened her up to be a, this great artist and, and musician for sure. For she has this uh, Neptune here in Scorpio. And water, she was able to dig deep and, and bring up some beautiful, beautiful music that touched the hearts of, of others in such a powerful way. Uh, but this Chiron, feeling this pain, and Pisces people um, are oftentimes prone to escapism. When you have Pisces, uh, sun, rising moon, uh, Venus, Mars, any any of those personal planets and significant places placements, Pisces people are prone to drug abuse and addiction of any kind because they want to escape the pain because they feel things so deeply. And then with this wounded healer right here, uh, it was very prominent for her, which is something that could and and did lead to. Uh, this issue of drug ab abuse that in addition to this Mars sitting over here in the 8th house and then again you know Bobby's plan is coming over here into the 8th house you know it was a huge deal for her you know all that she was so sensitive to everything around her you know and then the pain of course caused her to, to want to escape um, as much as she possibly could Okay, and then so she had her north node sitting here in the sign of a cancer in the fifth house. So, you know, it was her soul's purpose. Even she was very much doing this. She was very much doing the south, uh, the south node, which is here in Capricorn, and it is in the eleventh um, house. She received all of the accolades. She was publicly seen, 11th house. She received the accolades. She climbed to the highest heights. But that is what she, that was her south note. That is what she, uh, it was easy for her to do that. It was not difficult for her to come up here and be in this area. But the call of her life was to come down to the north node here and focus on family and focus on um, her daughter and the children and be the nurturer. But it was easy for her to be in the spotlight over here um, with the South Node in Capricorn. And, and she was not able to move towards this North Node because she was her energy was being um, given away. With the power and control issues over here, she could not focus on this, on caring for her daughter. She couldn't because her ashe was being stolen. That energy was being stripped from her um, constantly. And, and it was that she was giving her power away. And then she was trying to um, gain the power in this relationship and there was this constant back and forth and back and forth until her energy was was all used up and then we know um the result that happened for her daughter as well sadly to say rest her soul bobby christina okay let me see if there's anything else that is prominent that stands out to me we have um Bobby's uh, son in the sign of Aquarius right here. It comes into Whitney's 12th house. This is another issue. When you have someone's son that comes into your 12th house, um, meeting up with Saturn, no less. So with Saturn in the 12th, you automatically have these fears of uh, the conscious, the the collective. You have the fears of the collective around you. Fears of um, things that go bump in the night. Um, 
fear of not being progressive enough. We're talking about Saturn in Aquarius, fear of giving, fear of uh, sharing with others. Okay. And, and so she has these deep hidden fears in the subconscious mind. And then Bobby's son, which is the brightest light comes over here and it stirs this up. It stirs up these fears that she has it's dark in the in the twelfth house. It's quiet and dark in here, and then this bright light sun comes in here and begins to agitate and begins to stir up these fears and make the fears worse uh, than than what they had to be. And then her Saturn comes over here to Bobby's second house and uh, meets up with the sun, and then he uh, feels like he cannot. Uh, move forward uh, there there is a um, there is a blockage for him in his self-esteem his self-worth and him moving forward with uh, making the income that he needs to make and being successful because her Saturn is coming into his second house and meeting up with his son and blocking his ego he's not able to shine the way he needs to be able to shine and then again his uh Sun is coming over here agitating the Saturn in the twelfth house and and causing her because the twelfth house again is a water house it the house is traditionally ruled by Pisces, so another reason uh to escape to to the drugs to deal with the psychological pain of of what she was experiencing and didn't know how to how to get out of it. Okay, and I think that that is all that I want to share uh, about this couple, and I want to share it uh, in particular because I I want people to uh, pay attention if they can to how important it is um, the people to to look into astrology, to look at the symmetry chart when you have people coming into your lives, what are they bringing? And what is the long-term implication of this person being in your life? Okay, so this is a great reason to study astrology. So you can know who's in your life and how they will impact you. Because people can impact you for the better or they can impact you for the worst. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for uh, listening. And please like and subscribe and share and leave a comment. I appreciate it. It'll help my channel. Thank you.